uh, thanks, thanks for the introduction. And uh, it's a great uh, opportunity to introduce our work to the nano medicine community. Uh, hello, I'm Jun Qing. Uh, you can call me Chuck. Uh, I'm, I'm from University of Exeter. Today I will talk about the multiplex imaging of gold nano clusters uptake by uh, cancer cells and tissues by using the, the nonlinear optical microscopy. So our project is funded by BPSRC. So basically we use a Raman-based uh, technique to do a therapy and diagnosis with the help of the gold nano clusters. So this slide shows the concept and vision of our round project. So first of all, we will inject the, the functionalized gold nano clusters into human body. And after a few minutes, this uh, functionalized gold nano clusters will accumulate in a specific tumor site. And after that, we will shine the, the near IR, the, the near infrared laser to generate the surface enhanced Raman signal and also do the um, photosomal therapy. And after killing the cancer cells, these functionalized gold nano clusters would separate to uh, back into the individual gold nano spheres, which can be uh, safely cleaned out of the of human body. But before we jump into uh, this kind of uh, clinical trial in a microscopic uh, point of view, we will need to understand how the physical properties of golden nano particles will affect the selective targeting. So we proposed to use a multiplexed image platform to review the, the spectral temporal distribution of golden nano particles at a cellular level. So which means that uh, our system um, need, needs to be uh, ha have the ability to highlight the contrast of golden nano particles and, and also the cellular features. And we need to prove that we can do a 3D uh, sectioning, optical sectioning to, to make sure where the particles are. And also if we add the, the tiny uh, Raman tech, uh, something like the, the tiny um, molecules as a, a Raman tech, we, we will need to have the ability to do a chemically selective imaging. So let me introduce our system uh, first. So we use a femtosecond pulse laser to, uh, to do a nonlinear optical microscopy. So we have a pump beam and stokes beam. So first of all, we have our femtosecond pulses. And after passing through uh, some gratings, this uh, femtosecond will be chirped into a picosecond one. So the reason to do that is that you can see when we move this delay stage uh, back and forth to change the overlap between the pump and stokes beams, which gives us the ability to tune the frequency difference between the pump and Stokes laser beams. So the reason to do that is that uh, in the case of stimulated Raman scattering, the frequency difference between the pump and Stokes beams, when, when, when this frequency difference match the specific molecular uh, vibrational frequency, the Raman signal will be boosted. So which means that we, when, we, when we do a hyperspectral scan, uh, by changing the Raman shift to different uh, free, uh, wave number, we will be able to uh, probe the different biomolecules uh, in a level free manner. So let me show you an example. This is our setup. And uh, so usually we grow the, the 41 can, uh, breast cancer cells uh, on, the, on this uh, glass button dish. And as I mentioned earlier, and uh, when we do a hyperspectral scan, basically we can tune from the low wave number to high wave number region. So which allow us to probe the lipid droplet and the protein and even the DNA and water. And uh, as you can see here, the, when we select different regions, they have a different uh, chemical features in, in, the, in the Raman uh, technique. And we further use the algorithm to, to distinguish one molecule from other molecules uh, according to their different optical response. Okay, so we also performed the, the multiplex imaging. So here we combined the fluorescent dye labeled uh, different uh, cell organelles. And also the, the, in, the, in the lower panel, we, this is, this is the, our uh, SRS images. So we can uh, tune to different Raman shift to visualize the lipid protein and DNA dominated channels. So as you can see here, uh, we, I think we have a good agreement uh, when, when we compare our SRS, the 
the DNA dominated channel compared to whole trees labeled on cell nucleus. And not limited to stimulated Raman scattering. So we, we try to combine other nonlinear optical signals as well. So for example, we can um, use the two photon excited fluorescence. So we basically we excite the autofluorescence from FAD and NADH molecules uh, to see uh, to see the, the the distribution of FAD and NADH. And we also use the other tech, uh, signal, the SHG, the second harmonic generation, because this signal, the SHG, is very sensitive to um, non-central symmetric uh, molecule. So which, which means that we can use it to visualize the distribution of collagen or muscle fibers. And I will talk about the transient absorption later because we, we use it to, to pinpoint the, the golden particles. So this is an example of, the, um, of our uh, image, uh, tissue images. So this is a frozen section of a mouse a breast cancer. So first of all, we use the two photon excited autofluorescence. You can see some, there are some uh, cancer cells here. And uh, this is the SHG image of that. So we can see the, the collagen fibrils or collagen fibers, bundles. And when we draw a line here, you can see there are several cancer cells staying in between the collagen fibrils. And in the case of SRS imaging, so we, we can tune to a CH2, as you can see, as you know, the, the lipid has a lot of CH2 band, uh, CH2 bound, and uh, so we can use the CH2 signal to, as you can see, we can see some um, lipid droplet and also some vesicles, uh, as far as cellular vesicles. When we tune to the a protein dominant um, CH3 region, we can see the, uh, the protein features of that. And when we tune to the OH bound, we can uh, even map the distribution of water. And uh, now I'm trying to combine different modalities to, to verify each other. So in, uh, the, uh, in, in this case, the FAD and NADH are, uh, are located in the cytoplasm, and also the lipid are, are located in uh, cytoplasm as well. So there are some sort of co-localized in the cytoplasm. And uh, because the collagen is a kind of protein, so they can localize the, as well. And so once again, you can draw a line to really map the, the, the molecular distribution of, of different molecules. And uh, so let's talk about the, how to map the golden nanoparticles. So this is a UVV so absorbance spectra of the different golden nanoparticles. Uh, so we have our, our, our we have measured the golden nail rod, golden nail spheres, and golden nail clusters. So, in the technique of transient absorption, so basically it's a pump probe technique. So we, so this, is, as you can see, the pump is a, a primary absorption. So in the transient absorption, is that like we were uh, by changing the overlap of the pump and probe beams, we will have, uh, we will be able to probe the, the golden nail particles in a level free manner. And let me show you the example here. When we do a hyperspectral uh, images like this, so you can see uh, in, in the case of SRS, when you tune to this CH2 dominator, you can see a big peak of droplet distribution. When you tune to a CH3, you will be dominated by protein. And this will be of resonance of SRS. However, uh, you can see in, in the case uh, of our transient absorption is a quite broad distribution. As you can see in this uh, distribution, uh, this profile. So in the case of transient absorption, there is no uh, chemical uh, selectivity. Um, instead, you, you can only see that the transient uh, decay uh, when, you, when you change the overlap of pump and probe beams. So this is the way we, we, we do the, the uh, try to pinpoint the golden nanoparticles. So when we uh, combine the, the stimulated Raman scattering image with the transient absorption, as you can see here, we can really uh, pinpoint the, the distribution of golden nanoparticles and uptake by the um, 41 uh, breast cancer cell line. So we also perform the multiplex imaging of these um, to combine the two photon excited. Uh, so here we use the more specific uh, 
fluorescent dye to label the lysosome with a lysotracker green to really uh, make sure that uh, these uh, transient absorption, uh, which comes from the golden nail clusters, are, are taken into the cytoplasm region. And uh, we also have a, a ability to do a large area imaging. Uh, this would help us to more efficiently to pinpoint where the, the golden nail particles are. And uh, in our system, we, we already demonstrated that we, have, uh, we can provide the chemical information and also some structural uh, information. And we have, I think we have some um, good resolution can, can determine if the, the gold nail particle has been um, taken by the, the cyt cytoplasm. So in the future, uh, in our round project, we would keep optimizing the imaging platform for, for in vivo models. And we will try to boost the signal to noise ratio of our images. And we are also developing different uh, tiny molecules um, to form a, a time, we call it Raman text for multiplexed imaging. So with our technique um, enable us to do a, a fast imaging of functionalized uh, nanoparticles. So, I would say not limited to gold. I have tried the silver ion and even the, the graphene based nanoparticles. They all have a very strong uh, transient absorption signal, which can be used to localize these uh, nanoparticles. And uh, we also have the ability to do a 3D chemical imaging, uh, especially we, we, are, we are trying to develop the organoid and humanoid. So finally, I would like to thank our uh, collaborators and uh, our excellent co collaborators from different uh, universities, and also our uh, the generous uh, financial support from EPSRC, and uh, our contrast facility is open for uh, collaboration. And thank you for your attention. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh...